Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shantam Gore. I'm the co-founder and chief scientific officer of Valerion Technologies. It's a real tremendous honor to be here presenting at Sages. I'm here to tell you about ELLIPS, the procedureless gastric balloon for weight loss that we've been developing for the past seven years. Here's a picture of the device. As you can see, it's a balloon that is wrapped inside and folded inside a capsule. The balloon's attached to a very thin catheter that we use to fill the balloon with 550 milliliters of liquid. And once full, the balloon resembles and mimics the other intragastric balloons that you may or may not be familiar with that are now FDA approved and used for weight loss here in the US. So why do we create a proceduralist gastric balloon? Well, the first issue with endoscopic balloons is that they're really expensive. Endoscopy and anesthesia isn't cheap. And here in the US, these procedures are being offered for between eight and $20,000. And we just think that's fundamentally too high for weight loss. Number two, endoscopy and anesthesia aren't without risk, especially when you're removing balloons endoscopically through the mouth. You can get esophageal lacerations, tears, bleeding, even aspiration pneumonia. And finally, endoscopy and anesthesia are resources, and it's a lot easier for physicians, uh, even bariatric surgeons, to do something in an outpatient setting in an office rather than in an endoscopy suite. How do we accomplish this design? So first, the balloon's made from very, very thin film, a uh, film that's about 10% the thickness of any other intragastric balloon. That's what it allows the balloon to be swallowed. That's what it allows the balloon to be folded inside a capsule. There are two valves on the device. The first is the fill valve. Once you're done filling, you simply remove the catheter from the mouth. Of course, the patient's awake and, and conscious throughout all of this. And the fill valve snaps shut. The second valve is a release valve. And this valve is very, very special. Over the four months that our balloon is inside the stomach, the inside of this valve degrades. And at four months, it spontaneously opens, causing a very large breach to open in the balloon. The balloon empties out spontaneously, and the shell that's left over passes through the GI tract and is excreted. So again, just to emphasize, we are proceduralists in the sense that there is no endoscopy and no anesthesia. We are made from a very thin, flexible film to minimize the trauma to the gastric mucosa during the four months our balloon is inside the stomach. And our balloon from day one was specifically designed to be removed without endoscopy, i.e. naturally, through the GI tract. We recently conducted and concluded a multicenter trial. Looking at our device in up to 50, we ended up enrolling 34 patients. The device was intended to last for four months, filled with 550 milliliters. We enrolled patients with a BMI between 27 and 40, and as mentioned, looked at safety and efficacy across multiple domains. So very standard protocol. On day one, the device was swallowed. The gastric positioning of the device prior to filling was confirmed with x-ray. Then the balloon was filled to 550 milliliters. And then, again, the balloon was visualized just for the heck of it by x-ray and ultrasound. So here you can see an x-ray of the balloon prior to filling. Uh, you can see the delivery catheter, which is also radio-opaque, entering the stomach. And there's a radio-opaque marker on the inside of the balloon. You can even sort of make out the uh, faint uh, shadow of the capsule. Clearly, we're under the left hemidiaphragm, and so we're inside the stomach. We're ready to go and start filling. Filling takes about six minutes, start to finish. And after you're done filling, you can clearly see the balloon on ultrasound. And on x-ray, you can see the outline of the balloon nicely and the radio-opaque marker inside the stomach. Our patients were followed every two weeks, received very, very light, basic nutritional counseling. The balloon lasted in the stomach for four months, and at trial exit, we took a look at some metabolic parameters and quality of life. So we had 34 patients, uh, average BMI of 34.8. Of course, with a swallowed and excreted balloon, we had key contraindications, the first being any sort of dysphagia, any prior open abdominal surgery to reduce the risk of adhesions and small bowel obstruction, any prior intestinal obstructions, of course, and uh, any uh, history of inflammatory bowel disease. The study was conducted in two centers in Europe, one in the Czech Republic and one in Greece. As for safety, there were no serious adverse events throughout the whole study, no obstructions. The only adverse events that we saw were typical of gastric balloons. We saw nausea, vomiting, some abdominal cramping. Although later on in the study, we made one tweak to our medication protocol, which really did make the patients feel more comfortable. All these adverse events were self-limited or resolved with some medication, as I'll mention later. Uh, 
All devices were swallowed, no endoscopy or anesthesia. The mean visit time, even though this was our first multicenter experience, was only 22 minutes. Uh, and all of the catheters were successfully detached uh, prior to filling or after filling. All the balloons passed either in the stool or in emesis. So we did have four patients uh, at the end of therapy when the balloon had emptied, experienced some nausea and vomit the balloon. The other 30 all passed through the GI tract and were excreted in the stool uneventfully. Uh, we were able to actually, if you can believe it or not, recover some of the balloons that were passed. And we confirmed that the balloon was intact except for that release valve, which is designed to degrade. And we hit our goal uh, almost on target. Uh, our balloon lasted in the GI tract for 117 days, so just over four months, with a two-week standard deviation on either side. So the weight loss was comparable to any other gastric balloon study you uh, may have seen. Our patients lost on average 10 kilograms. Uh, that corresponded to a four-point BMI reduction, eight, uh, eight to nine centimeters off the waist, and close to a 40% excess weight loss, which correlated to a 10% total body weight loss. Our patients were pretty healthy at baseline. Uh, only a few actually had metabolic syndrome. We saw modest improvements in these metabolic parameters uh, and modest improvements in blood pressure as well. We're hoping to repeat this study with uh, patients with metabolic syndrome to see what effect we have. We measure quality of life across several domains uh, using the IWQOL uh, metric, and we saw statistically significant uh, increases and in improvements in quality of life. We uh, took the patient experience very seriously. It was probably one of the most important things we did in the study. Uh, and we asked every patient if at the end of the study, would you recommend ELLIPS to a friend and would you repeat it? And as you can see, uh, close to 90% in both uh, categories answered yes. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we tried out three different antiemetic regimens during the course of the study. Uh, nausea and vomiting tend to be the big knock against intragastric balloons, especially from a patient experience standpoint. In our first cohort of eight patients, we tried uh, Zofran uh, along with Buscopan, an antispasmodic. Saw 100% uh, of our patients, so all eight experienced some vomiting during the first couple of days of therapy. We then switched to an antiemetic known as EMEND, uh, used mostly in chemotherapy and uh, post-operative nausea vomiting prophylaxis, and saw a, a, you know, a modest effect. Seven out of eight patients still had vomiting. Only one out of eight was vomiting free. And then when we combined the two agents, we saw a synergistic effect. And to my knowledge now, we've uh, actually uh, propagated this antiemetic regimen to a lot of the other balloon companies, and they seem to be using it with great effect, uh, making the patients much, much more comfortable in the course of balloon therapy. Importantly, with balloons, too, there's this issue of patients wanting the balloon out. Uh, and since we've switched to this antiemetic regimen, both in our clinical experience and now that we're CE marked our commercial experience in Europe, we've had no voluntary withdrawals. People have kept the balloon in and been very, very comfortable with it. Just a, a final slide here, comparing our weight loss to a standard endoscopic balloon, the Orbera balloon, recently FDA approved. Uh, not only do we uh, mimic the uh, magnitude of weight loss, but also the kinetics of the weight loss uh, seem to be identical. Uh, and so I think what we are accomplishing here is mimicking a mechanism of action that's been known for decades with endoscopic gastric balloons, but removing the endoscopy, removing the anesthesia, and hopefully making this much more affordable and a much more uh, beneficial experience for our patients and our physicians. So in conclusion, uh, this study demonstrates uh, at least early evidence that ELLIPS is feasible, safe, and effective. Uh, it, we showed improvements in metabolic parameters and quality of life, uh, and we are working very actively on doing bigger, larger, and randomized studies to, effect, uh, to uh, study our, our balloon more in depth. Thank you very, very much. Well, very good, man.